Okay, this is not necessarily a fair comparison, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But I thought I'd look at how a lower price range Pacific Northwest boot might compare to a quality made in China boot from Grant Stone. Let's take a look. G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy, and my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and waters I live on, the Wajit people. Today, I thought I'd look at a comparison between the White's Fulton Mokto work boot and the Grant Stone Mokto field boot. One is made in the famous Pacific Northwest boot making center, and the other from an American direct to consumer company is made in China. It's not a totally fair comparison because I chose a mid US $300 White's Goodyear welted boot and not one of their handmade rolled welt boots. And you know, one is made as a work boot while the other is a casual boot made in the style of American heritage East Coast hunting boots. But at the same time, they are in the same ballpark because the comparison is between two Goodyear welted boots at the mid $300 US dollar price range. And in that sense is a closer comparison of value and quality within the same type of construction and price, if not the whole brand. Now, before I start, let me be clear that I'm not going to see this from any political or jingoistic viewpoint about the land of the free and the brave versus a communist regime, but only in terms of quality and value of the product. This is the Fulton Mokto work boot from White's. A company that started in 1853, went for three generations of the White's family right up to the 1970s before selling to other people uh, and now is firmly established as a Pacific Northwest quality boot maker since the turn of the 20th century. They are famous for making tough logging and firefighting work boots and my favorite service boots, the MP boot, take a look up there, uh, with their hand stitched famous rolled welt construction. Their handmade boots sell for US 600 and upwards. Recently, they've been releasing lower priced Goodyear welted boots like their uh, Mokto Perry boot, which I think was one of the first, which fall in between lifestyle and work boots and um, boots like the Fulton over here, which is more in the work boot category. The Fulton is a taller eight inch Mokto work boot on the White's 1972 Arch Ease Last and sits on the Vibram Honey Lug sole. It sells for the mid 300s, made possible, I think, by the faster Goodyear welt construction. This boot is Grant Stone's field boot. Now, Grant Stone started in 2016 and through uh, long term links of the founder's family to a factory in China, make their boots in China while headquartered in Michigan in the US. Their keystone model is the diesel boot built on their Leo last, which is also used to make up several other models like the Edward and the Ottawa. Grandstone was set up as a direct-to-consumer company and hence able to cut out middleman costs and undeniably, despite the use of top-grade American and international materials in the uppers and the soles and the other components, undeniably also benefits from the lower cost of production in China. What has set them apart has been the obvious quality control systems and procedures embedded in the manufacturing. First, let's take a look at the similarities. They are both high volume mock toe boots. By that I mean that first, their construction mimics the moccasin construction of American First Nations footwear. But unlike makers like Rancourt and R Russell Moccasin, they are lasted from the top down rather than from the bottom up. They do not have a bottom piece that wraps around the bottom of your feet. Both of these have the uh, vamp mock toe stitch made by sewing the side walls to the vamp piece with that typical mock toe apron stitch. Now I believe in both cases they are two separate pieces of leather. Both are Goodyear welt construction. That is, there is a uh, thin strip of leather called the welt which is sewn on the inside to the insoles and uppers and then separately on the outside through the midsole. It's known as a water resistant form of construction and of course eminently recraftable because a cobbler can replace the worn outsole by peeling off the outsole 
and gluing another one, uh, another one on without potentially damaging the midsole or in fact anything else. Uh, if you want to dive into the Goodyear Welt system of construction, check out this video up here. They are both made of thick but supple leathers. The Fulton boot is made of a full grain water resistant leather in this color that's called brown distress. I believe it's a combination tanned leather. It's first chrome tanned and then oil tanned. The, the surface is, um, I think, slightly velvety, slightly waxy. Feels like a Nubuck leather that's pumped full of oil. And I'm not sure, but I think like Nubuck, if it isn't Nubuck, the surface is slightly corrected. While over two millimeters thick, it is very supple and comfortable with hardly any break-in required. The Grantstone Field Boot is on the Rumia Floyd last, and the leather is Italian Veg Tan Leather from Badalasi Carlo Tanray. It's also about two millimeters thick, and being veg tanned is firmer in the hand, but after breaking in is also supple, if also a little more protective. Both have a lightly padded roll at the collar. The Fulton's in a brown leather, while the field boot has a suede collar. Both have semi-gusseted tongues, which adds to the water resistant capabilities. Uh, the kilt is on the Fulton, doesn't come as standard, and it's from Dale's Leatherworks. Taking a look at the differences, apart from the obvious uppers leather. The Fulton uses a Vibram outsole. Um, that's their softer compound honey lug sole. This provides great grip and comfort. The field boot, on the other hand, is built on Grandstone's proprietary wedge sole with a wavy pattern for grip. But I have found it slippery under smooth, muddy conditions. Made of something like blown rubber, uh, it's very comfortable also, but it might wear a bit faster than the Vibram honey lug soles. The apron stitch is different also. On the Fulton, it's a straightforward, regular mock toe stitch. Now, I did have a problem with the stitch on the right boot, where at the corner, uh, the stitch popped after only a few days. On the field boot, uh, it's also a real mock toe stitch in that it does stitch two pieces of leather together. But in this case, the top vamp piece is rolled over the top of the sidewall piece before it's stitched together. I, I presume that, in theory, this is a, a better protection against water. The hardware is eyelets and hooks on the Fulton, while the field boot has eyelets and somewhat annoying noisy D-rings. Now to the less visible. Uh, the Grantstone field boot has a leather flat welt, while the Fulton boot has a leather storm welt. The welt stitching on the Grant Stone has quite a high density, uh, quite a high stitch density, while the White's Fulton welt stitching has a lower stitch density. Now look, neither are bad construction, they're just different. And you know, aesthetic choice in how the stitches look is really in the eye of the beholder. Inside the boots, the Grant Stone field boot has a leather insole, leather midsole, leather heel counters, and a steel shank. The White's Fulton boot has a leather insole, leather heel counters, a Vibram rubber midsole, and a composite shank. I think it uses the Vibram rubber midsole so as to adhere better to the Vibram honey lug sole. Now, Grantstone glues their wedge sole directly to the leather midsole, which in theory may not be as uh, holding fast as if the two materials flax at different rates, it might shift. But as an aside, the modern glues used by bootmakers these days is good enough to glue you up to the wall and you won't move. So there. <laughs> Physical differences and similarities aside, their prices are in the same range. US 340 for the Fulton and US 380 for the field boot. By the way, I find that a, kind of weird. I call the Fulton the Fulton and not necessarily the Fulton boot. But I call the field boot the field boot and not field. <laughs> Anyway, for a similar price, do you get a similar quality boot and hence a similar value? Trigger warning, controversy coming up. Much as I love my White's MP boots, when I compared the MP boots to the Viberg service boot, I concluded that the White's MPs, while built sturdily and totally worth the price, they are built like a work boot maker makes boots rough and sturdy and not at all delicate and fine. It's much the same here. The stitching on the Fulton is good enough, if quite low in density on the welt, but it's built like a work boot. 
The field boot, on the other hand, it can take it in the rough. I have tracked in it, but it's made a little more finely with high stitch density, uh, details like the rolled vamp piece, and, the, and they take the care of joining that flat welt so that you can hardly see where the joint is. So far, that's horses for courses, right? Depends on what you like. But even forgetting that mock stitching that burst on my Fulton, that could easily be a one-off, I think what you get from Grant Stone in terms of clean construction, precision, and overall consistency, it's better than the Fulton. You pay an extra $40 for the field boot, but I think it could easily be worth another $50 on top of that, with the exception of the corrugated pattern on the um, wedge sole. I'm not a big fan. Let me be clear. If I compared one of White's hand-welted, rolled-welt, stitch-down models, it would blow up the field boot. But those are $600 or even over $600. So, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> in this case, I think Made in China beat up PNW. As a business advisor in real life outside of YouTube, I believe that if your company wants to stray outside its central vision, which in this case is a well-made, handmade product worth many hundreds of dollars, in order to compete at a lower or different market, you have to either create a new brand, like Weiberg did with your traditional work boots, even putting them onto a different website altogether, or you make damn sure that you beat out the competition at the same price range. Now, I don't know about you, but when McDonald's first started selling healthy salads as a side order to Big Macs, it was jarring. <laughs> healthy fast food did not compute. They actually struggled for a while before they made sure to really make good salads, and then the brand image was intentionally changed to being healthy. Hey, but don't worry, the White's MP service boot is still my grail boot, and you cannot go wrong with White's higher-end models. Hey, if you decide not to shoot the messenger, I hope you click on the like and subscribe buttons down below. The messenger appreciates it. Until the next time, take care and see you soon.